Hello, Tubies, and how are you all doing? I hope you're doing fantastically fabulous. Today, we're going to be talking about Mer while we take a little trip around Brad Creek. Okay, so just like enjoy. I will link this particular resource that I have found that to me explains both the medical and the magical uses of myrrh down below in the comment section, but please remember to do all of your medical research and to make sure that if you're allergic to something that you don't use that something. And if you're pregnant, don't ingest myrrh. We'll get to that. We'll get to that, okay? So what is myrrh? We've all used myrrh. We've all seen myrrh. We've burned it. We've smelt it. We've enjoyed it. We've mixed it with other herbs and used it in spells. But like, how much of it do we really know about? And a quick Google search about myrrh's magical uses will bring you to the resource that's linked in the comment section down below. I'm not going to read all of this because it's long and I don't have time to do that. So we're just going to go over the basics. If you want to learn more, well, Google is a great resource and there's a link in the comment section. So myrrh, as we all know, is a sticky, dry resin, right? Like it's all resins are sticky and dry, like dragon's blood, frankincense. If you have any sweat on your hands and you touch these resins, your hands become very sticky very quickly. The shit like really works with water. It melts in water. <laughs> I don't think it actually melts in water, but something about water makes it sticky. Um, the myrrh that I have, I don't find it sticky, but if I'm holding it in my hands and my hands are a little bit sweaty, then it'll get sticky. It's a sap, okay? It's a sap. Now, there's a Latin name here that I don't know how to pronounce, but it comes from a certain forlorn desert tree. So, myrrh comes from a desert tree, okay? It's extracted by piercing the bark of the tree and returning later to collect the nuggets of dried sap. So, I mean, in ancient Egypt, you know, they used myrrh along with linen and other stuff to embalm the dead, the resin both perfumes, and, um, and preserves the body of the deceased. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm gonna go open up a mummy coffin right now and see, like, do you smell good? Because, you know, it's been thousands of years, right? Myrrh trees grow in the wild, in the shallow, rocky soil of desert regions. The main producers are Ethiopia, Kenya, and India. All are some word I can't pronounce because it's Latin, but the aroma and strength varies by region. The quantity and quality of myrrh on the world market has been in decline for many years. And that's probably, it doesn't stay here if the tree is going extinct, but a lot of these resins that we like to use obviously come from trees, and when we're damaging trees just to get their sap so we can use it as a resin, or we're cutting them down so that we can use their bark or their wood in, um, like as incense or whatnot, like sandalwood, then we're gonna cause these things to go extinct. You know, the other day I was reading this article about how apparently we are in the, in the next, or no, no, we are in the sixth mass extinction caused by humans. And I'm like, oh, kinky. So let's get into the correspondence. Cor blah, 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 blah. Actually, let's go to the magical uses of myrrh before we start skipping all over this article, okay? So it's a sacred incense of the Bible. Like, we should all know this, right? It's mentioned several times in the Old and New Testaments. Myrrh represents Christ's suffering. The gift of myrrh by the Magi represent, or presages his death and intonement. The, am the evangelicist Mark says that Christ was offered wine mixed with myrrh prior to the crucifixion. Myrrh mixed with frankincense is still used in the church incense as many Christian denominations. Now, I love to burn myrrh and frankincense, but I don't burn it for any Christian reasons. I burn it because it smells really great. Okay, it's sacred to the Great Mother, whether she is called Mary, Isis, I don't really know why you would call her Isis, but okay, and Bina, the names Mary and Myrrh both probably derive from the Hebrew word for bitter. So Mary was a bitter old woman. 
That explains a lot of things. <laughs> As an incense and anointing oil, mark can lead to rich, rewarding meditation. I've never used it for meditation. I have no experience there. Let's talk about its correspondences. Myrrh is a complex scent, and there's several different energies bound upon it. I, this is, so this is, whenever I read these articles about incense or herbs or resins or whatever, they're always like, there's so many different energies and it's so complicated and blah, 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 blah. And maybe resins are, maybe I'm just being an idiot and resins are very complicated. And myrrh does have a complicated scent. But I don't feel its energies are that there's several different energies that are bound up in it. I find it to be a very relaxing, very cleansing kind of incense. And if relaxing and cleansing are two different types of energies, then okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> to me, they're the same thing, but whatever. Um, let's see, what else do we have in here? Most writers, including my favorite author, Scott Cunningham, have listed myrrh as a herb of the moon, especially the dark moon. This makes more sense given the resin's strong feminine history. The flowers are white, typically of lunar herbs, and a secondary planetary match would be Saturn, which rules darkness and endings. Okay, myrrh is dark and depressing and twisty, and I need a bottle of tequila just to keep going through this. Uh, what else do we have in here? How about water? Because the moon pulls on the sea and rules psychic matters, a lot of lunar herbs get automatically sorted onto the water shelf. Myrrh certainly has some water attributes. It ties to sorrow, contemplation, and the womb. Like tears of grief, myrrh leads us to, into the depths of emotion in order to work its healing magic. I've never experienced myrrh to be a healing-based type of herb um i don't know i've never i've never used it for healing i've never really used it to begin with i do have myrrh and i've never used it for anything not because i didn't know what its magical properties were but because there was never any use for it i have a small bottle of myrrh because i only ever bought a small tiny amount of myrrh during the phase where I was like buying all the herbs and the expensive things and all that fun stuff. And I bought all these resins and, and most of them I haven't, wait, what are the resins that I did buy? So I bought sandalwood, no that's not a resin. I bought frankincense, dragon's blood, palo santo resin. What else did I buy? Oh, and then there's myrrh. So I've used the first three that I mentioned, but I've never used myrrh in a magical working. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do that. The energy of myrrh invokes both evokes both the dark ancient earth and great black sea. Ritually, it is used to heal grief, nurture wisdom, and honor the dead. I've been using patchouli to honor the dead. Okay. A musky, a musky sweet blend of myrrh, patchouli, and damiana, can you not even pronounce that? Is recommended by some lady as an incense for sexual magic. See, I would probably use myrrh and patchouli for the spirits. Burn before ritual, myrrh rids the area of negative vibrations. It helps cultivate wisdom and self healing. Interesting. So here's the precautions. Okay, so myrrh is approved by the FDA as a food additive. Okay. However, concentrated forms such as essential oils should never be consumed internally. The oil may safely and beneficially be applied to the skin when properly diluted. So if you go out to your witchy store, your witchy store, your witchy store that you like to go to and you buy, or even if you get it from the internet and it's actual myrrh essential oil, like not that fake crap that you can buy, but the real stuff, then you'll probably want to dilute it before using it on skin. Okay. Myrrh can act as a uterine stimulant and should not be used by pregnant women. Unlike OSHA root. Well, would it cause an abortion? If it's a uterine stimulant like OSHA root, probably. So don't be drinking OSHA root tea and do not be using myrrh if you are pregnant. Okay. Um, it doesn't say whether burning myrrh or being in a room with myrrh burning will cause the uterine stimulate. This is mostly under the precaution section and seems to be tied to the oil section of myrrh. But again, consult your doctor if you're pregnant before burning, ingesting, or having anything to do with myrrh. 
Scent profile is bitter sharp. Uh, I wouldn't really agree with that. Complex, no. Musty, absolutely. Balsamic, mm, me medicinal, no. So I find it to be a really musty smell, but I don't find it to be complex or bitter sharp. So its correspondences are moon, Saturn, water, earth, and according to this article, sun, Mars, and fire but they don't explain how Sun, Mars, and Fire are a correspondence of murder. So, okay. So where where would you use Mer? Like, what would you want to do with Mer? Why would you want Mer at all? Like, why would you want to go out and buy Mer as, as, as a witch? I mean, if the witchy show is sitting here telling you that they've never used really, like never really burned or used Mer, then why should you go out and buy it or add it to your witchy supplies. It is really great for protection and it is really great for cleansing. So if you can't burn sage in your house and because you're maybe you're a witch and the rest of your family is like hardcore Christian, you could technically go out, buy some frankincense and some myrrh and burn that. And if your Christian family flips out and says you're practicing witchcraft, you could literally state that myrrh and frankincense are used in churches as their incense. So, you know, there's a little bit of witchcraft there, right? Like you're hiding your witchcraft behind the Bible. <laughs> What family doesn't love that? <laughs> so I hope that you gain something out of this short video. We'll do a video, another video on myrrh. Um, and I will link this information down below. So I hope that you guys gain something out of this. I'll link the content down below for you guys to read through and look through and see if any of it resonates with you. Um, again, I've never really used myrrh in any massive kind of magical. I don't think I have any videos on my channel that show me using myrrh. So maybe we should fix that, right? Until next time, Tubies.